This was the first Pro Football Hall of Famer, I believe, inducted that I covered his entire career as an NFL Network host. Uh, this was the first uh, of 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 that for me, which makes me feel old. Uh, but the man who was drafted in 2003 by the Pittsburgh Steelers and is a Hall of Famer of the first variety, joining us courtesy of the Taste of the Super Bowl, Frito-Lay commercial and campaign. This is a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Good to see you, Troy Polamalu. How are you? What's up, Rich? How you doing? It's great to see you as well. It is good to see you. Um, now, I just first things first, I'm sorry, Troy, to just go, go here in the first direction. I'm only seeing you front on. You haven't cut your hair, right? Can you give me a profile? No, no, okay, no. good. Okay, very good. Because <laughs> the way it looks right here, it, like it looks like you, because I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, so we're still, we're still the way that I'm. Uh, I, I remember you is what you're saying, right? Okay. Yeah, you know, I can't get rid of my money maker quite yet. Of <laughs> <laughs> your bust uh, is truly one of my favorite busts in the Hall of Fame. Um, d- did you have that full-on conversation as to how you wanted your bust to look, hair hairstyle? Troy? You know what? Uh, man, I, I, I'm so sorry. I forget. I actually forget his name at this moment, but he's a, an amazing person actually flying in there. Uh, he's a true artist actually, when it comes to sculpting. So if you actually go and look, uh, the bus is actually a very small part of his sculpting. Um, so you never tell an artist what to do. Actually, a funny story regarding the bus is yes. his wife, uh, like I'm sure most wives, like my wife is highly critical about our work <laughs> um, uh, comes in and looks at my bust and she's like, man, that head is too big. That nose is too big. It's way, everything looks too big. And quite honestly, I was thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. It takes the caliper and he like measures it. And it's just like, everything's perfect. The nose is perfect. I'm like, damn, it's got that big of a head, I guess. <laughs> so uh, he actually truly is a, is an amazing sculptist. So um, definitely left it up to to him yeah blair buswell is his name so you were blair does all yeah, those, blair, yeah. Blair, blair yeah blair yeah i blair, know yeah. oh my gosh and uh it's so it's so cool troy so did you get who called you on your draft day was it cower was that the first guy who who you spoke to on your draft day out of usc troy it was um i you know i quite honestly i, I didn't want to leave california coming out of usc so when i got this 412 area code i had no idea where it was from where it was from but i knew it wasn't oakland i knew it wasn't san diego and i knew it wasn't la or anywhere in california but yeah i talked to coach cower and i i'm not a big follower of the game so i was calling it like high uh heinz field i was calling three rivers which had already been changed over <laughs> several years into it um, I, I didn't even know Coach Cow was still coaching. Uh, so there was a lot of things that I had to learn about Pittsburgh and even the NFL once I started playing in, in it. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm sure. And now you're such part of the fabric of the city um, as well. Um, what can you tell me about Mike Tomlin, Troy, that maybe folks might not know? Certainly now that he's in the playoffs again, but a lot of folks in Pittsburgh, to be straight up, want to see banners not just winning seasons what can you tell me about Tomlin from your career well uh, to be honest uh, I think what makes him very unique is you see what you see is what you get there's no no secrets about him he's very authentic he's man of integrity Um, I you know I I did an interview earlier talking and they're talking to you know some crazy things about him not being the coach I think it's, it's insane for him uh, not to be the Steelers coach um, next year. Um, he's a Hall of Fame coach. He's, to me, one of the three. I, I, you know, I've had Coach Cower. I've had also Coach Carroll. So those three are, are three of the best coaches I've ever been around. They're all equal to me. So um, I think Coach Cower should and should always remain uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. It'd be crazy not to be. I, I, well, I, I, I think that way, but, um, you know, Many Steeler fans think he's kind of set in his way, and um, and that that is something that trips him up sometimes. Uh, I and that's why. I'm, but set in his ways is something that players kind of dig, right? Because he's consistent. Yeah, you know, there's obviously culture evolves. You know, I, I felt that I feel that Coach Tomlin always was able to connect with 
our generation of players, including this younger generation of players. Um, so I, you know, I think that that I can understand the argument about putting up Super Bowl rings. You know, um, we're we're a city that's that's driven by championships. So um, there's also, you know, I think a, a few different internal changes. You know, we have Omar Khan being the first year as a, as a general manager, and that partnership continuing to evolve. You've got the you know shakeup in the scouting department. So I think there's a lot of things that are changing within the organization that are building towards what I think is the most important thing that that that, that the Steelers have um, that that builds championship is is culture. And once you start building it from, it has to be built from within. And I think it takes a little bit more patience. I think Coach Tomlin should see you know our evolution through that as being a championship coach as well as as evolving into another one. Troy Palomalo here on the Rich Eisen Show. And what's your favorite Pete Carroll story from your college days? Oh, man. I, I, I don't know if some of them are. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll say this. So we were a team that had a lot of talent. Um, and we had a lot of first-round talent, but we obviously weren't, weren't, weren't playing at a very high level at USC uh, before we'd gotten there. So Coach Carroll had heard that we – there was a lot of inter internal turmoil within our team, people fighting against each other, offense, defense, not getting along and whatnot. So he tells us to meet at the Coliseum at midnight um, when he like he first became coach. So we all meet in the Coliseum at midnight. There's a rope in the middle of the field. He has offense and defense playing tug of war and all the lights are off. And of course it's empty. And uh, we play tug of war and I, I forget who wins, but, you know, the message was if we're all pulling in the same direction, nobody could beat us. And what we did is we all came together and we got really, really tight and he made us turn around. And I'll remember the date, too. He says on November 17th, when we play UCLA, we're going to meet in the middle after we win. And this whole stadium is going to be full of people cheering for us. And it's exactly what happened. And to me, that that was one of the many special moments I've had with Coach Carroll, um, you know, through our time together. Wow. What a story, Troy. So that's what he told you? Like, hey, this, this place is going to be filled. He mentioned UCLA in specific. November 17th, and uh, we shut him out, and we won. And we all met in the middle of the field. We turned around, and it was exact as he said. Wow. What a story that is. Yeah, Pete's, yeah. Pete's unlike anybody. And, again, you know, my wife Susie, who covered the teams back in the day, and she would always tell me, you know, when you started playing in pro ball about your stories, is it true you and your, your wife will pay the bill of somebody in the restaurant who looks like they're having a nice night, like their husband and wife and, you know, they're in love and you pay their bill without them knowing and you just slip out. Is that true, Troy? Do you do that? I, you know what? I, I love that this room has even reached the Rich Eisen show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> though i you know honestly it's i i love how these rumors are are, are passed around but uh as long as the legends still passed around i um let's keep it going <laughs> okay all right Tr Tr let, then let's talk about your take oh, we'll leave it at that uh we'll we'll yes. talk about the uh taste of the super bowl commercial are you what what is this about so partnering with a, a you know obviously a very classic brand like frito lays um i think it's also great you know, working with Gronk and, and Marshawn, you know, those guys are are amazing people and characters. Uh, so, you know, it's just a great opportunity to to eat good while we're watching the Super Bowl to to enjoy a snack that I that I and I think most people love as well. Mm -hmm. OK. And the Frito-Lay chip strip fans will have the opportunity to try their luck at the Frito-Lay snack pot. Take a yeah, seat. I'll, I'll be out there putting some time in on the strip. Okay. <laughs> but, all right. So I'll be just yeah. walking down the street, and we'll see you. You could take your hottest ride on the strip and feel the love at the Cheetos the Chapel. The real me. Okay, the real you. The real me. Okay. <laughs> You'll let your hair down is what you're saying. I don't know about that. We'll see about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Troy, um, let me ask you this question. Again, I, I don't know how locked into the current game that you are. Who, who do you think is somebody – uh, in the secondary whose play impresses you that you think this kid or vet is uh, worthy of uh, praise from the great Troy Polamalu? Uh, honestly, I, I, so I do, I do um, help a couple uh, NFL players, Tui Tupelotu and Talano Hufanga. So 
Um, I've, I've helped them um, a little bit in college as well as in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, so there are two players, of course, that I uh, critique and, and, and break down quite a bit. Um, so I admire their game, of course. Uh, but I think uh, Derwin James is somebody that I, I really admire. Um, you know, who, who I actually get a, a lot of, of information from is Ryan, because I, I, I get it more in a condensed version. Ryan Clark, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, and a more of a, of a condensed version. So he's always, so I, I always bounce things a lot, a lot off of him and the people even that, that he trains. But to me, him, uh, the guy in Seattle, Jamal Adams, somebody, Tyron Matthew, th these guys are, are people that I admire just the diversity uh, of, of the traits that they have and they're able to provide for a defense, I think, are, are things that I admire about their game. What do you think of that kid, Kyle Hamilton, in Baltimore, Troy? Oh, absolutely. Um, him, obviously Minka. I mean, those two guys are, sure. are best in the game as well. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I remember even, I think Kyle went to Notre Dame as well, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. Yes. So I've been a big fan of his as well. So there's a, a, a quite a few guys out there, man, that are, that are playing in a game that that quite honestly is 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 evolving into something that that's making them have to be better athletes. And you're, they're um, they're a little thin in that position right now in Pittsburgh, Troy. They they might need you for a few snaps in oh, Buffalo yeah. coming up on uh, on Sunday. What do you what do you think? Man, it, what's so funny is I remember playing and I would look back at like Carnell Lake and then and Rod Woodson and I was like, man, dude, you guys could play. They're like, no, man. I know now how they feel. <laughs> so although the shell may look good, I appreciate that. <laughs> the internals don't function the same. <laughs> that said, Troy, you and I both know Mel Blunt can give snaps this weekend. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Absolutely. That I love I love people's first first like, you know, their their face when you tell them like, yeah, that's Mel Blunt. He was a cornerback. Uh it's incredible. He's incredible. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time I laid eyes on Mel Blunt at a, a a pro football Hall of Fame ceremony, and you know your head just goes up, and it keeps going up, and then up, <laughs> and then up, and then you see the cowboy hat, and then it goes even further up. Oh my God! No, I know. I, I always yeah. think to myself, that's why they changed the rules. This looks like a human being that would change the rules because of his play. Yeah, you know. You know, it's 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 funny. There there are. There, there are some freaks within our game that we consider, you know, there's Megatron and some of these, these guys that are just like abnormally huge and freakish in their positions and the traits that they bring. And then you still go back though. And they're like, oh my gosh, there's so many guys like Mel Blunt and all these guys that are just as maybe even bigger freaks. Um, and in terms of just athleticism, um, it's it's incredible, man. Those that that generation is is unlike any other. And I think Patrick Peterson is learning the position right now, right? Isn't that what he's basically doing in Pittsburgh? He's trying to figure out how to play some safety. And 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 you know, it looks like T.J. Watts out for the weekend. That's unfortunate, but the Steelers are in though, Troy. Right? They're in, so you got to be in. Listen, man, I I, I just. To me, one thing that was really beautiful about being part of that culture is, is like you, if you just get a ticket to the show, you know, where the, to me, it's like the, the, the crazy uncle that's just going to act out. So as soon as we get into the show, I think, you know, you see the best thing of what our organization, what our team can actually provide. Um, so I think our, our playoff chances are, are, are really great. Um, I think the more adversity that you pour onto our team, the more it's going to crystallize our culture and make us better. And for me, I hope that it, it shows out on, on um, you know, when they play against the Bills. All right. Uh, and uh, last one for you. Where were you on the play where Harrison returned it for the touchdown? What was your perspective uh, on that moment, Troy? In the Super well, Bowl? you know, I, I, I hate to say this, but uh, I made the key block in order to <laughs> in order to <laughs> in order to score that touchdown. So James actually owes me a lot to this day, and he does he does give me a lot of thanks. But uh, no, I, I actually um, <laughs> just like everybody else, man, I was running from my life trying to get in somebody's way, um, and I, I was so exhausted after that play. I I knew that it was a touchdown, so I just went straight to the locker room, and I actually watched the whole call from the from the locker room um that's um, what you so, did so yeah. you 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 again by the way do not i know you're a sweetheart but you you don't have to hate to say it i mean yes you you <laughs> performed a key block for harrison 
And so you're saying, uh, by the way, your fellow, uh, you know, future Hall of Famer and Larry Fitzgerald, um, he, he damn near made the tackle. So you're saying you you do this play, this play happens, and the first thing you do after you catch your breath is you go back to the locker room and you watch it back? That's what you, how you spend part of halftime? That's, yeah, I did. But it, the truth was I didn't. I didn't make the key block. It was his teammate that made the key block because I pushed them into his team. <laughs> so note to everybody on the sidelines and all the strength coaches, listen to them. Back up. Get off the white. Get off the white. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, that right? So they were on the white. You took somebody and threw them. Okay. Look at you. You're watching it back right now, Chris. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Troy was on the back side of the play. So he was running clear across the field. And then, bam, he throws a guy in, and there's a big collision. And then James kind of takes the rest it? of the way. Whatever you got to do, right, Troy? The guy he threw <laughs> was Larry Fitzgerald. He pushed Larry. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. I pushed them out of bounds. Into oh, this, yeah. Into yeah. yeah that's oh, right. my God. Troy, what a pleasure to chat with you. Um, I do hope to see you in Las Vegas. Thank you so And congratulations. You know, I'm, I'm MGO Blue. That's right. You know, you know, my father-in-law, he was down there uh, yeah, celebrating the victory last night. So congratulations. I'm very happy to be, you know, part of your celebration the first day back. <laughs> Troy, that means the world. Thank you so much because you know what it's like uh, to to be the champions of the world, man. So uh, <laughs> for sure. Thanks for the thanks for the Zoom. Appreciate it. M go blue. Thanks, Rich. There you go. The great and fi- I say fight on. Right back at fight you. On. Okay, there you go. See? Uh, Troy Polamalu right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Two-time Super Bowl champion and pro football Hall of Famer and all-world human being. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 